So a lot of people might have heard the terms Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Um, so peripheral T-cell lymphoma is a type of non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And specifically, when we think about lymphomas, we think about the, the origination from a type of blood cell called a lymphocyte. Um, lymphocytes are part of our immune system that help us to fight infections. They typically live in the lymph nodes, which are those glands that get swollen when you get sick. They typically come in one of two varieties, either B cells or B lymphocytes, which are the antibody producing cells and T cells or T lymphocytes, which are kind of like the immune regulators. So peripheral T cell lymphoma is simply a lymphoma of those T cells. And um, the peripheral part just means that it typically originates in the lymph nodes. So the diagnosis can sometimes be difficult. So typically the most important step is to get a biopsy. And many times we'll get a, an initial needle biopsy, which is oftentimes not sufficient. So if patients have the ability to get what's called an excisional or a surgical uh, lymph node biopsy, that's much more helpful in making the diagnosis. Once we have that tissue obtained, it's typically uh, sent to a pathologist where they do some special staining and additional tests that will help differentiate um, the diagnosis as well as the subtype. When they do that, they're looking for specific markers. They're also looking at, at what the cells look like, if they're big and ugly, if they're in sheets and kind of how they uh, interact with their environment. And that's ultimately what makes the diagnosis. So usually in patients that are newly diagnosed, the initial treatment options included multi-agent chemotherapy. These were things like CHOP, or you can do CHOP plus etoposide. And then more recently, patients that have expression of a protein called CD30 uh, can also receive treatment with a targeted therapy called brentuximab bidote, which combines a chemotherapy molecule with an antibody. And that's given along with chemotherapy. In patients that have an initial response to therapy, they can also consider an autologous stem cell transplant in first remission. So these patients would receive typically around six cycles of chemotherapy and then be considered for an autologous transplant. In those cases, we try to do the transplant typically within the first couple of months after completing therapy. And an autologous transplant consists of what we call a conditioning chemotherapy regimen and then we give patients back their own stem cells in order to repopulate their body with their own healthy stem cells. There's been lots of um, new and really exciting therapies for peripheral T cell lymphoma. So starting with brentuximab, which was really approved within the last few years, um, uh, first in the relapse setting as a single agent and then in combination with chemotherapy, and then more recently, we've also got um, several additional um, uh, single molecule inhibitor drugs, things that can be given orally. Um, those are oftentimes given in the relapse setting. And we have lots of clinical trials that are also investigating additional, um, more targeted therapies for this disease. We used to use a lot of combination chemotherapy and consider transplantation in patients with relapse disease. And that is still something that is considered in some patients. But now that we have some of the more targeted therapies, we can also consider treating these patients either with things like brentuximab, particularly for anaplastic large cell lymphoma or patients that have um, CD30 expression. Uh, but we can also consider uh, treatments with um, things like bromodepsin or bolinostat. Um, and of course, clinical trials are all, always an option as well um, at certain centers, and those can be subtype specific as well. So I think things are changing so rapidly with this disease that um, it is very important to make sure that you are being seen by somebody that really feels comfortable and is up to date with the current treatment strategies. Sometimes that means that you, uh, it would, you would benefit from getting a second opinion um, at an academic center. Um, and particularly if you're interested in clinical trials, because we typically have trials in first line and in relapse patients. So I would definitely recommend um, seeing somebody that has experience in this disease because it is rare 
and the treatment can vary significantly depending on the individual and depending on your specific diagnosis and stage. So I think things have changed so much. This used to be a disease that um, across the board had a very poor prognosis, but that's rapidly changing. Um, we are curing more and more patients all the time. People are living longer and better. And it's hard to even know how to tell someone what their prognosis is nowadays because things are moving so rapidly. Whereas patients that, you know, even a few years ago, we, we would have thought that we didn't have many options. You never know when the next thing is coming out. So I think it's always reasonable to have, uh, to have some hope, even with this disease.